Hello and welcome to the Cloud Inspired channel. So this video will cover a step-by-step -step guide and demo showing how to configure Data Loss Prevention or DLP for short on a Windows device to block or warn as shown. So we will show this together with auditing sensitive information like drivers license numbers, IP addresses being copied to the clipboard um, from a document and pasted elsewhere um, into Notepad for example. We will also cover the setup and demo of onboarding devices to Microsoft Purview from Microsoft Intune. We will configure and show the block warn of copying uh, Microsoft documents and files to network shares, copying files outside a remote desktop session for RDP, blocking uploading files and data to cloud storage like Google Drive. We will also look at auditing in the compliance portal to see alerts and the activity explorer. Okay, so let's get started, but before we do, it would be great and much appreciated to have you on board to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to check out the popular and very cool cloud-inspired merch available. Got some great stickers, hats, drinks, beer mugs, and clothing available um, with a super um, cloud-inspired logo. So it would be great for you to all to get involved, be the first to comment, and where in the world you have received the merchandise from, all the way from this UK channel. Let's cover licensing. So this is the licensing required for Endpoint DLP and to use this functionality. So again, any links are in the description. So for the onboarding steps, we start by enabling the connection between Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Intune. We then create an MDE onboarding policy in Intune, and Intune will then automatically collect the onboarding package from MDE for your tenant. So you just need to assign the onboarding profile to the devices you want to onboard, and Intune will push the onboarding package to them. So let's make sure in endpoint settings in the security portal at security.microsoft.com, the Microsoft Intune connection is turned on. And then in the compliance portal at compliance.microsoft.com under settings, device onboarding, we have some options um, for onboarding via various deployment methods. We can use local script, group policy, config manager, but we will go for the MDM and Intune um, for this demo um, deployment as this is scalable once configured. So let's download the onboarding package and then we go to intune.microsoft.com. Um, I know so many portals, um, but so under devices, configuration profiles, create a new policy and we are testing with uh, Windows here um, for this demo. So let's choose the platform as Windows 10 and later and the profile as template. And let's choose um, the template Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Okay, good. So let's give the profile a name. The package type is onboard and we will block sample sharing and enable expedite telemetry reporting frequency. So unzip the file and attach the onboarding package file that we downloaded earlier on. And we are going to apply this to our device group, which contains the devices we want to deploy this package from. So we won't apply um, any rules um, and then uh, we will view and create. This is the autopilot device group containing the devices that we want to deploy to. Then when we go back to the device onboarding, we can see the device onboard with no policy sync applied yet. So let's have a look at the DLP settings made available to us. So on the left hand side menu under data loss prevention, there used to be a, an endpoint DLP option for settings here, but it looks like this is now moved um, to the overview page in the right hand corner. Let's click into settings and we can take a look. So all of these settings apply to existing and new DLP policies. Advanced classification when turned on allows the classification service to scan items and classify them. We can add file path exclusions for Windows to exclude from monitoring. 
This also include file path exclusions for Mac, and we can turn on evidence collection for file activities to store and collect original files to online storage. We can extend exclusions for mapped network drives and shares so they will not be monitored by policies. We can add different access restrictions for different types of apps using app groups to control the level of access um, for sensitive content. Also, you can restrict apps based on the access by restricting apps um, setting in the DLP policy. We will see where that setting is in the next section when we create a, a DLP policy. With auto quarantine settings, we can specify a location on the end user's device where files should be quarantined if they are blocked from accessing um, an unallowed app um, that has uh, the auto quarantine selected under restricted app settings. So we can also replace um, that block file with a custom text file to let the users know where the file um, has been moved. We have Bluetooth app protection and we have unallowed browsers that can be set to block access to protect files. We can set service domains which we will cover shortly in the next section and we can block external domain access for example blocking users uploading files to external cloud storage like Dropbox or Google Drive. We can customise a block with override setting notifications that users will receive. Um, file activity is always audited by default um, for Office PDF uh, CSV unless this setting is turned off. Printer restriction groups to apply different restrictions to printers. Remove removable USB drive um, device groups can control what happens when a user attempts to save protected files to removable USB media can set different network share groups to apply different restrictions to network shares. And then last on the list is VPN settings and we can apply different restrictions when users are connected over a VPN. So you will also, um, you can configure a simulation mode instead of test mode where you can evaluate policies in simulation before enforcing them. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of settings here to configure um, and we have many options to control. Um, our DLP policies under these settings. So now let's take a look at blocking service domains in the next section and then after that we will create and configure a test DLP policy. So we can add service domains and block external domain access for example blocking users uploading files to external cloud storage like Dropbox or Google Drive. So please note any of these policies work with Microsoft Edge browser but need the purview extension installed on devices for other browsers like Chrome. As you can see we already have a list um, we have added before of popular cloud domains. Um, so we'll add one more here so we will click add and we will add Dropbox to this list. Next let's configure a policy to use these settings here. Okay, so now let's configure a DLP policy and look at some settings available for us to use in this policy. So we will create a policy to block warn um, of the copy of Microsoft documents and files to network shares. Also block copying of files outside a remote desktop connection for RDP. And we will block uploading files and data to cloud storage like Dropbox as specified in our added service domains in the last section. We will also look at turning on auditing as well. So we go to policies in the left hand menu under data loss prevention and then we click create policy. So we will choose a custom policy, uh, choose what name you want for this policy and we will choose where we want the policy applied. So we will only choose devices here and untick the rest. We can specify this policy applies to all users in groups or chosen users in groups. We can also exclude users here too. So we will leave as all users and we click next and then we can create a DLP rule to apply with our conditions and actions um, to configure. Let's create a new rule and look at these options. So we give the rule a name and now we can add a condition and we have lots of options here to cover many conditions. So we will choose file type is for this condition and then we add our file types. So we will select all these common file types. You can choose uh, file extension is 
um, if you require that um, in the conditions list and add a custom file extension um, if you wish. We will also add another condition content contains. Um, the add sensitivity info types, we have a long list here um, of different types. We will search for sensitivity info types for the UK and then we'll select all of these. Oh um, yeah, and we forgot to, to add credit card numbers, so let's add these two. So we have two conditions. The first is to trigger the policy on file types, and the second is to trigger on sensitive info types. So now let's choose our action. So click add an action and audit um, or restrict activities. Here under service domain and browser activities, we can audit only or block with override or block when users upload to a restricted cloud service domain um, in our list earlier that we created or access from a, an unallowed browser. We will choose block with override here and paste sensitive information in a text field to support browsers we choose audit. And then under file activities that match the policy condition we set earlier for file types and sensitive info, we can trigger when a user attempts to copy uh, to clipboard um, of these file types and sensitive information, um, we choose block with override. Block with override on copy to a network share and we copy or move um, using RDP to block with override. And then we choose audit online um, on removable USB storage um, and Bluetooth and under restricted apps activities we will audit. User notifications we will turn that on and we tick notify users in Office 365 with a policy tip and we can customize the message users receive um, if required. Then under incident reports, we set alerts um, to send alerts to our cloud admin user. And then we click save to create the DLP policy. OK, so now let's demo and test copying files to a network share. So we see we have three documents to test. We have a test word document with no sensitive data we trigger on in our policy. However, we do trigger on the condition that it is a file type of word document. We have another word document with um, a driver's license info. So we do trigger on that sensitive information under a condition we added earlier. And we have an Excel file with credit card number on to trigger policy. So all three documents should trigger the policy based on the conditions and actions we set in the DLP policy. So let's open the network share. And then when we drag and drop or copy uh, these files to that share, we get a notification giving us the option to either allow it or dismiss this action. Because in our policy, we choose block with override for copy files to a network share. The same for driver's license file and the same for the test document we will dismiss and not allow the copy. Now these actions will be audited in the portal as well so we will take a look uh, later on. Now we have a remote desktop RDP connection to our device and with our sensitive files in OneDrive. So when a user attempts to copy and paste any three of our files into the local desktop, we get a message, um, this isn't recommended and either allow it or dismiss this action. Okay, good. So let's now demo and test the service domains we added. We will log in to Google Drive in Microsoft Edge browser, and we would need the Purview extension installed on devices for other browsers like Chrome for the policy to work. We are logged into Fred Blog's personal Google Drive account. And now when we attempt to drag or upload a file into Google Drive from the local desktop, we can get a block notification. Now let's demo a copy and paste to the clipboard um, block restrictions that we have set. So in our Word document, we copy a UK 
driver's license number for testing um, to the clipboard. Uh, this is a fake driver's license number, by the way. And then we open Notepad up locally on the device to paste this information in Notepad. Because this is a sensitive information, we set and condition um, in, within the policy. We get an allow it or dismiss this action message. And we get the same when we open up Notepad and attempt to copy from an RDP session to Notepad on the local device as well. OK, good. So these user actions performed in the last section are audited under alerts and activity explorer. So we can see the alerts generated under alerts for DLP policy matching our documents. We can see um, the target domain for Google Drive when we attempted to upload a document there. And we can also see the file paths and file name, etc. in Activity Explorer. Now, the Activity Explorer also gives us a breakdown of DLP rules matched and what actions uh, were triggered, like file copy to a network share, copy to clipboard, etc. And we get uh, email alerts also sent um, to cloud admin stating uh, an alert has been triggered based upon a sensitive IP address. So that's it. Please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notified on future up and coming videos. Many thanks and see you all soon.